Yo, goons, what's good? So, today I thought we would talk a little bit about what I consider to be the different levels of play in Guilty Gear Strive. I thought it's just kind of a fun topic, something kind of interesting. And in the background here, I've got, uh, this is a bit dated now, but a first to ten I did with Memo Carp a little while ago. Not my best game today, but that's beside the point. So, that being said, let's get right into it. So starting off, I want to say that I think we can kind of categorize or quantify different levels of play in Strive and not just arbitrarily look at like the gradient of skill there is from people who just picked up the game to people who are winning every tournament. And I think there's kind of some utility in that because I really believe that if you can accurately categorize these levels of play, there tend to be like a cluster of issues that people have in one of these tiers that keeps them from going to the next tier a lot of the time. But that might not necessarily be the case. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's just kind of a fun way of looking at Strive, just spurring some discussion here, right? So naturally, the very lowest level in Strive would be beginner level. People who did just pick up the game for the first time, and even here, not all players are created equal. There's people who have fighting game experience, there's people who don't have fighting game experience, people who have anime fighting game experience, etc. People who've never picked up a stick before, they all start at the same level here, technically speaking, but some will learn much faster than others. People in the beginner tier, they really have no idea what they're doing. They're kind of just picking who they want to pick. Maybe some of them are watching videos on the game before trying it and going based on that. But at the end of the day, no matter what, they're starting the game and they're having no, no clue what's going on. <laughs> they're just pushing buttons. They're just having a good old time most of uh, most of the while and strive is actually a great game for beginners it feels very rewarding at first you know even super suboptimal rc combos i remember picking up the game in the beta and not knowing what i'm doing and i did like one rc combo and i thought it was the coolest thing ever but in reality all i did was like red rc s fireball on kai <laughs> and, and get a wall splat and break off of it i thought i was badass but you know in any case what usually keep people from progressing from beginner level is a serious disinterest in the game like they just don't like the game enough or they're having a really hard time getting over the initial learning curves so much so that it just ruins all potential enjoyment of the game and they just drop it now if you've ever been in this tier for any game i would say unless it's very obvious to you and you know what you like i i would say that you should probably give the game more of a chance but in any case um, after beginner level comes like casual so these are people who progressed from beginner and i'm going to say casual and the next category after this um they're not necessarily like a progression of one each other these are like branches from beginner so beginners can kind of terminally progress to casuals where they never decide to fully hard commit to playing the game but they still enjoy it and they still play it sometimes maybe with their friends maybe online they're just mashing you know these are your may players your, your four seven four eight may players that just are playing the game because they want to go to sea world basically they're not trying to do anything optimal they just like it and you know every fighting game has casuals and actually the vast majority of a game's population is going to be casuals actually regardless of what the genre is barring some very uh, esoteric games i guess something like starcraft for example okay. so i guess the other path for beginner would be the path all the way up the top player and after beginner comes what i like to call learner so these are people who decided to stick with the game and they want to get better right they they, they enjoy it they want to understand the mechanics of the game so they can you know either do cool stuff maybe get to a competitive level whatever the motivation is they want to keep going and usually you find these people you know floating between like fours eight and ten something like that i would say if, if i had to put a number on it they still are doing extremely suboptimal things but there's a clear differentiation from the beginners like they're starting to grasp some of the basic gameplay mechanics like you know, you're, you're running into people that now know how to do basic inputs, for example. And again, if you have experience, you might progress or even start at this stage far faster than someone who's, who's never done a quarter circle on a controller before. <laughs> so, you know, what keeps people from progressing from the learner stage? And actually, bear in mind that the distribution of levels of play here is basically like a left skewed bell curve. So most players are going to be in these first few categories that I mentioned. And as we go on, exponentially speaking, there's going to be fewer and fewer players in each category, right? So many, many players are beginners, casuals, and learner. In fact, a good majority of all players are definitely within those categories. And what keeps people from progressing from learner, and of course, like I said, statistically speaking, I think there are a lot of them, um, is really like a, a bad idea of what to continue learning. 
because usually in the learner phase, there are very clear things that you can be doing better, things that you don't need someone to explain to you, things that you can learn just by watching better players play the game and setting specific objectives for yourself in mind. And, you know, sometimes that's not always practical. People learn at different rates. People have jobs. People don't have all the time to learn and they can lose progress and whatnot and just lose motivation. Those tend to be the things that stop people from progressing here. Either that or just terrible mental. Like blaming things that you're doing wrong on the game, on the opponent. You have to be able to progress past that mentality if you want to ever try to get remotely good at this game. Okay, so the next category of players is something that I wouldn't really give a name, but what I would quantify as low celestial and high floor 10 players. So th these are players that finally understand what's happening in the game. They tend to have somewhat of a grasp on the meta as well, even if it doesn't translate to their level of play. They at least understand what's going on at the higher levels of play. They watch the game, they know what to improve on to some extent, and they've kind of optimized their game plan a little bit, right? But they're still really struggling to find consistency. And what I tend to see at this level of play, like Low Celestial, High Floor 10, they have a core game plan that they're going for, right? They have a core strategy, but they really, really tend to crumble when that strategy falls apart. Like when you play against higher level players that are able to play around gimmicky playstyles or just have much better defensive reactions, they just they, they just don't really know what they're doing. And again, the mental comes into play here when we're talking about a failure to improve. Lots of these players can stagnate here and they feel like they're not making progress. They feel like the people above them, they can't really put their finger on what they're doing better or even if they can, they can't execute it themselves. Much of that is a mental block again. Because aside from like the last two categories of play, I think that all of these areas that I've mentioned so far, they all have specific things that you can target and improve on that are relatively obvious. You don't need a coach. You don't need a super analytical mind to see them. Right here, it, it's almost always like a, a number of habits like bad use of burst, getting burst baited really easily, not having good burst awareness, very sloppy neutral, you know, a lack of consciousness in the neutral, autopiloted offense and bad defense and also not having contingencies for when people play around your consistent game plan that tends to be what keeps people from progressing here and of course those things are harder to learn than what it takes to go from learner to low celestial all it really takes to go from learner to low celestial high floor 10 is just refining your, your game plan or even understanding what your game plan is on your character right okay so the next category i would say is mid celestial so this is where you see people who might be like level a thousand ish like people who have some experience in celestial but you've never really heard of them. And when you play them, honestly, you see a lot of the habits pouring through from high floor 10, low celestial. It's just like a slightly improved version of those players. People who have gotten into celestial and now they've played a little bit in celestial, but most of the time, and this is again, a serious majority of the celestial players in my experience, they, they still have a very linear game plan and it still completely makes them fall apart when they play against someone who can defend against it or counter it in neutral one way or another. Whatever it takes for them to, to get around this person's game plan, they don't have contingencies for it. And another thing that players at this level need to start worrying about is definitely matchup experience. That's what separates them from the next level of play. Not only that, but also being able to deal with players that are better than you in some ways. You know, if you run into a low celestial player and all you're doing is better defense or better neutral than them, a lot of the time that can just carry you to a victory because even doing one thing better can can give you a huge edge on those players. Now, when it comes to getting better as a mid Celestio player and you want to get to tournament level, that's when you really need to refine all aspects of your game plan and look at your gameplay holistically. You, know, you want to make sure you're doing good combos, want to make sure you're doing good pressure. Again, try to increase the level of consciousness you have in your neutral. Watch the screen, defense and experience is a huge thing here that separates mid Celestio players from tournament players as well. That said, there are a ton of mid celestial players that have tons of games, like thousands and thousands, even over 10,000, even over 20,000 games, and they never really progress past this point. And, you know, I, I think that's fascinating. They definitely exist. I personally have encountered them, and I just, I, I don't know why that's the case, you know, because there's very good scientific evidence. This is a bit of a tangent, but there's very good scientific evidence that in almost any endeavor, the biggest predictor of people getting to the top level of play is not talent. It is practice, experience, and dedication, right? There's some great videos on this, you know, kind of detailing evidence about how people with like 10,000 plus hours 
not only is that everyone who's at the top level of you know major things like music and whatnot but anyone who does do those things tends to get to the top level in in many areas of life as well right so in other words not only is it that top people have tons of time in and practice but if you put tons of time in and practice you're very likely to reach top level and for some reason for some people that's not the case you have to be able to consciously prove you can't just stagnate and become uh, a, a little bit unconscious in this period of play that's something that holds a lot of people back now tournament level players right so what i would call tournament level players are people who can consistently break even in tournament like they're doing better than going 0-2 and 1-2 and they're at least going 2-2 and most of the time but they're being held pretty pretty far back and they're not actually able to get anywhere past that on a consistent basis on average they might be going 2-2 3-2 two, 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 but they're not getting top eights in online brackets and of course at majors they probably drown in pools maybe have a small chance of making it out on loser's side so these players they, they tend to be above the mid celestial players they have some matchup knowledge but what makes them fall apart is still mostly a function of experience like there are many situations where better tournament level players or people who've been playing at tournament level longer understand setups better than even these people might so you really want to have your own character strategies pinned down here you want to have airtight clean gameplay and if you're playing a strike throw character for example you really want to understand what your character is looking for you want to know what the opponent's thinking when to strike when to throw that kind of thing be able to do that consistently and not just randomly run your game plan which tends to be a much more common thing with the lower levels and then there's what i would call high level tournament players so these are people that can consistently depending on size of bracket do better than breaking even top eight and even win uh, on online tournaments. So this is a big category of play, but it's a very small category of players because what you tend to see is the same few players hitting those placements um, on a regular basis. By the way, this is where I personally would place myself, but like in the middle echelon of this level of play, because I think there's still a divide between like myself and people that are regularly winning online brackets, but I still wouldn't call those people top players, if that makes sense. Uh, we'll get into that, right? So I think, uh, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but one of the big things that holds people back at this level of play is staying composed against top players. Because if you're at this level of play, you're losing to people that are seriously good at the game. Like you're, you're not consistently losing to even tournament level players, and especially people below that, you're like never losing to them, basically, unless you're having a really bad day or you're warming up or whatever, right? Which everyone does sometimes, but in any case... Um, it's very difficult to improve from this level and i say that from personal experience and also from having seen it um a billion times with a lot of my friends and and people that i play with this category it's because it no longer is remotely obvious what you have to improve on here right even if you watch top players you might not see a significant difference in the way that you play a match and the way that they play a match or at least you might not see a difference in such a way that you can actively adjust your game plan and emulate that for example when I watch Darkrai, right, Darkrai is, is definitely in the top player category, right? He's certainly better than I am. But there are many times where I'll, I'll see a match, and against Happy Chaos, for example, he will just block like eight bullets worth of mix-ups. He'll backdash the tap dust, he'll get his back throw. I can't watch that and think to myself what I could be doing better against Happy Chaos. I just can't do that. I, I just, right now, I cannot block that level of mix-up and react to the tap dust with a backdash throw. You know, I, I personally can't. And again, I think that really comes down to experience. And one of the big things that helps you get to top level play from here is going to be consistency. And this is the biggest thing I'm trying to work on right now, because I think many, if not all players in this category, they have the potential to be a top player. What's holding them back is some combination of experience, consistency, and mental fortitude, right? It's really not mechanical skill or knowledge at this point. For me, I still need some matchup knowledge. You know, that, that that would help me but i think it no longer makes a significant difference at this point because everyone in this category has good knowledge of pretty much every matchup regardless so let's talk about the final echelon of players this is what i would call top players and to give a few examples of people in this category i'm talking about people that should win online brackets if they were to enter right or at the very least unless there are other top players they're extremely favored to win these brackets so someone like neubenheimer like i said already Darkrai is a good example of that. Mochi, 
Skill, Zondo, Latif, Tiger Pop. Some very, very, very fantastic players that even against high level tournament players just somehow crank it out like every single time. Someone like Nubenheimer, for example, like the, his win rate on, you know, like Trevor Sue or Dende, those are people in my region. So I'm just using that as an example is incredible. Like he, he barely ever drops tournament sets to people who are incredibly, incredibly good at the game. And that is something that is very hard to isolate as to, to why it happens. These players also have like the best situational awareness I've ever seen. Like Ubenheimer's recognition of the situation he's in and what defensive options to pick in that situation and what to be looking for. People below this level, even at high level tournament, wouldn't even think about that. Like it doesn't even occur to them. And again, I think a lot of that comes down to a combination of good practicing habits while also gaining a lot of experience and being able to think when you're in those situations and recognize based on before all the thousands of games you've been in there. And that's kind of just a big thing with improvement overall is being put in situations. And if you lose that situation, going back and recognizing what went wrong and what you could have done differently, because almost every time there's something you could have done differently, but not every time, like I said. And that's what can be hard to understand about these top players. Like, again, I don't understand how Dark Ryan and Nubenheimer block Happy Chaos Mix so effectively. Like, I, I just, I cannot do it. And it's not clear to me what they're doing different than what I am. And I know for a fact, it's not just them being built different and like inherently better than I am. I just can't place my finger on what it takes to go from my level to that level. So, um, I hope that was an interesting discussion for the goons. It's all that I had planned for this one. And if you didn't know, I actually am going to Frosty Fastings. I've been streaming, practicing a lot lately. So if you want to check that out, let's check my Twitch in the description. So that's all for this one. So until next time. Oh, and take this all with a grain of salt, of course. It's just my opinion. I just thought it was an interesting conversation. So yeah. Bye.